These are the announcements for Trinity Tulsa. Vacation Bible School registration is open online. Children, grandchildren, and friends are welcome to register. Low-cost option are just $15 per child or $40 per family. Learn more and register online. We are in need of donations for camp scholarships. The goal is to raise $1,500 to ensure that all nine of our children needing assistance can go to camp. Please give on the website or using an envelope in the pew. This Sunday is the first Monarch Way Station Committee meeting at 1215. Meet in the Nichols Great Hall. Everyone is welcome. Choral Evensong is this Sunday at 5 p.m. The service will be preceded by an organ recital at 4.30 by our own Casey Cantwell, a reception to follow. Coming up, we invite you to take part in Justice in June. This online resource contains a schedule of self-paced anti-racism resources. Do it on your own time, then join us for an optional discussion each Thursday in June at 6 p.m. The discussion group will meet and take place at Neff, N-E-F-F. Please sign up on the website to receive details and reminders. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, Trinity welcomes you.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, who has exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us unto the same place whither the Savior Jesus Christ has gone before who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward the heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that we may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you, had ga- you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your pr- own presence with the glory that I may in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. 
I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them in your name, that you may that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. John, John, John. How many of you actually understood that gospel lesson from the very reading? I and him and him and me and they and us and all that. We're bouncing back and forth. Okay, so let me see if I can... Let me see if I can break it down a little bit, okay? Sometimes, sometimes we talk of glory days. Those are the good old times when everything seemed right. There's always some sort of nostalgia that goes with that when we mention those glory days. We know now that things are much different than how they used to be. We have to face the fact that there's been loss and regret and fumbling. The readings this Sunday point to glory days. They point to suffering and loss. The hour has come, it says in the gospel lesson. The context of this gospel is the Last Supper. Jesus is praying for his disciples, praying for us. The disciples, so often the beneficiaries of Jesus' instruction, are now the beneficiaries of Jesus' prayer for them. But in his instruction and prayer are part of his overall work that reaches its climax when he is glorified at the hour of his death and resurrection. This takes us to the second reading this morning which uses glory several times, but connects sharing in this glory with sharing in the suffering in Christ or of Christ. The multiple references to glory in both the gospel and the second reading situate us squarely in the Easter season. Yet in their midst, we are reminded that suffering is the door through which we can attain glory. We can never truly separate resurrection from suffering interpreted as dying to self for the good of others. Taking up Jesus' mission can be dangerous indeed. It means self-emptying. It means self-giving. It means suffering. No wonder Jesus is praying for his disciples. Taping, taking up Jesus' work means taking up his suffering, or at least part of it. However, sharing in Christ's suffering does not mean suffering for just suffering's sake. Jesus suffered through his passion and his death, yes, but the greater suffering Jesus accepted was to bear. The etymology of the word suffer comes from the Latin root to bear. The teaching and preaching, the healing and miracle working to fidelities, to God's will that brought Jesus to the cross in the first place. In all his life, 
Jesus showed us the model for self-giving that persisted between Jesus and God. The gospel is ultimately about mutual self-giving and going into life and into that glory. We are to give ourselves to God and to one another in love and in service to one another. In this is God's glory and ours. When Jesus left this world, he had very little reason for hope. Jesus seemed to have achieved so very little and to have won so very few. And the 12, soon to be the 11, to whom he has entrusted this new church is certainly not among the most capable of leaders and not the most dynamic of preachers. So, so with such a small beginning, Jesus changed the world. As Jesus returns to God, Jesus leaves a portion of that glory behind, a faith community. Jesus' priestly prayer, which we hear on this Sunday before Pentecost, next Sunday, Pentecost, is a prayer not only for his followers at the table with him right then, but also for us as the table will be prepared for us in just a few moments. That we may be united and consecrated in the truth Jesus has revealed, and so that way we can reveal to the world the love and care of God for all of the human family. In today's gospel, Jesus prays, prays that his disciples will be worthy and effective witnesses of the gospel he has entrusted to them. There we go to that in, out, in, out, in, in you. We're going back there. That same gospel has been passed on to every generation of the church ever since. In baptism, that gospel was passed on to us to become witnesses of the great Easter event and accept responsibility for telling our children and people of our time and place the good news, the good news of the empty tomb. And this is not by words alone, but in our attitude of joy our work of reconciliation among all, our commitment to what is right and just. And our simplest acts, our simplest acts of generosity and compassion, we witness God's name and presence to the generations that come after us. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the life and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love, Lord, in your mercy. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Paulson, our own bishop, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember these Oklahoma congregations, St. Luke's in Idabel and St. Mark's in Hugo. Lord, in your mercy. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land. For Joseph, our president, Kevin, our governor, and GT, our mayor, that they may be led by wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of the bounty. Lord, in your mercy. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Barbara, Vivian, Jackie, Siren, Leslie, David, Pauly, Belinda, Finley, Joe, Nancy, Lisa, Kenton, Susan, Ray, Suna, Bob, Beth, Sharon, Daylin, Mary, Laura, Al, Tim, Paul, Nancy, Jeff, Evan, Dina, Diane, Melody, Joyce, the people of Ukraine, and other victims of violence, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, Lord, in your mercy. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of thy heaven, heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Greet one another in the name of the Lord. Have a seat for just a few moments. Is there anyone here at Trinity for the first time today? Oh yeah, we've got, I've got fingers being pointed. Okay. Even if they don't admit it, trust me, they will find you. We're so glad that you're here. Welcome. Glad that you are joining us this morning at Trinity. We have a couple of people who want to say something this morning. So Eric... Come forward for social justice. Hey everyone, I'm Eric. Uh, I'm the usher sometimes, so you've probably seen me, you know, wave the collection plate under your nose a time or two. So I think all of you know me. 
I'm speaking to you this morning on behalf of the Social Justice Commission, which, as many of you might know, we are a group of parishioners here at Trinity who try to be Christ's hands and feet in the world by spreading the cause of social justice in the Tulsa area. Now, recently, to this point, that has primarily been in the form of, of immigration issues. The group was first started in response to certain immigration policies enacted a few years ago. It's included such ministries as delivering groceries to families who might be food insecure because of their immigration status. We've helped Afghan refugees, such as through English learning conversation circles. We took two, so there are two, uh, I mean kids, high school students, Paimon and Alham, brothers, who came here on their own, alone, it was just them. We've helped them get in school, get a permanent residence, get a driver's license, uh, join a soccer team. One of them graduated the other day, so we've been, we've been trying to do our best with those ministries. I'm here to say that we are working on expanding our ministry. We're not abandoning the old. We still, we very much appreciate each and every one of your continued support in these ministries. Our, our recent cookies and milk drive, very successful. We always appreciate food donations. We're expanding our ministries now. In particular, we've been spending the last several months educating ourselves on issues relating to homelessness in the Tulsa community. For example, did you know that there are about 1,200 homeless, non-housed people within about a 10-mile radius of this church? Of those, 14% are employed, so it's not a, a lack of work ethic in some of these cases, and it's not always the case that employment alone is enough to keep people off the streets. Fully a third of those 1,200 report mental health issues as a primary cause of their homelessness, and a half, in fact, more than a half, report domestic violence as a factor in their homelessness. So clearly there's a need. We, in our mission to be Christ's hands and feet in the world, would like to try to fill that need, and you can help, here's how. The first way is, is Iron Gate. Iron Gate, many of you know, it's a soup kitchen that was started here at church. It's called up at the south entrance over here, there's a set of iron gates, which is where the name comes from. Uh, they have their own permanent address now, and we're trying to put together groups to go volunteer there, one Sunday a month. So if you have, you know, three hours or so to devote to, to coming and doing a, a breakfast service with us, if you have three hours free in the next year, uh, get with us, talk to us, and make that happen. Number two, we're putting together care packages. These are little, you know, baggies with water bottles, granola, toiletries. So this way you can, you know, you're driving down the street and you see someone camping out under, under the highway or they're standing on the, on the corner with a sign, right? If you're not comfortable giving them money, you can reach over your passenger seat, grab one of these, give it to them. It's not much, but it's something, right? You don't have to just look ashamed and, and, and drive on by them. You can, you can give them this and hopefully it will, it will be substantial enough to, to make a difference. And number three, this is the most important way you can be part of this, come to a meeting of the Social Justice Commission. We meet the first Monday of every month at six o'clock here at Trinity. There's always several sign-up sheets that go around, so if one of those speaks to you, hop on that. Otherwise, come and be part of the conversation. Come and uh, help us try to find ways we can be better in, in some, of these, some of these areas. So to recap, Thank you all very much. Thank uh, Trinity for allowing us to meet here, for allowing us to do this ministry. That ministry is expanding, and we would very much like for you to be part of it. Thank you. Eric, thank you. Thank you, thank you for that wonderful, wonderful presentation. Kevin Kelly. No liturgical dance for this one? Okay. Hello and good morning. I'm Kevin Kelly and I'm heading up our Trinity Fair fundraiser this fall. I won't take much of your time now because we'll be asking for more of it later. Trinity Fair will take the rummage sales of the past and add upscales, items, and various events to present a fun fundraiser. Friday evening, we'll have a patron party in the Nichols Great Hall featuring silent auctions, gift baskets, 50-50 raffle, food, drink, music, and more. Friday evening, we'll also give patrons first dibs at the premium items in our boutique and a delightful chance to mingle with parishioners and guests. Saturday will be a full day event with the boutique 
and the bazaar located in the Endercroft that will be chock full of value priced items. On Saturday, persons in need will be able to shop with Trinity Bucks in lieu of cash. We will have a pet adoption event at the time which we can showcase our blessing of the animals. Booth space for our ministries to sell from and feature their good works are available as well as booth rentals for individual sellers. Besides being a substantial fundraiser, it will be an open house to the wider community. This is a prime opportunity to capitalize on our location and the re renaissance of downtown Tulsa. This event will be vigorously promoted to the wider community, a great fundraiser and an opportunity for others to see who we are. What do we need? Dollars to fund the production of the event and to create Trinity Bucks. Quality donations. Are you saving it for your kids and they don't want it? <laughs> Downsizing, settling estate. Somebody else will love it. Tax receipts are given for all donations. We aim to collect the most valuable items first so that we may have time to reach out to the widest audience possible and to build excitement for the event. Time. We can use any of the time and talent that you have. Do you know of someone who needs community service points? We can provide them. If you can hear me, you have something to contribute. More information will be available by a clickable link on our website or by contacting me. There are flyers in Nichols Hall now with more information. Thanks for your time and get ready for an event that everyone will love. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. Thank you. For, uh, Kevin's been here for all three services, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those announcements. A couple of other ones real quick. Keep uh, choral evensong tonight at 5. Uh, the service will be preceded by an organ recital by our own Casey Cantwell at 4.30, a reception to follow. And that is the last one for this season, uh, through, you know, through this year, so until the, until the fall. Vacation Bible School registration is open online. Children, grandchildren, and friends are welcome to register. Low-cost option is $15 per child or $40 per family. Again, learn more and register online. Monarch Way Station Committee meets today at 1215 in the Nichols Great Hall, right outside the door and through there. Um, we, are invite, we are in need of donations for camp scholarships here at Trinity. The goal is to raise $1,500 to ensure that all nine of our kids get a chance to go to, um, get a chance, who need financial assistance to go to camp. Please give on the website or there's envelopes in the pews. You can fill out and say camp scholarship, put that in and put that in the plate. Justice in June um, cultivates a community rooted in truth inspires action and is committed to awareness. According to the website, justiceinjune.org. This online resource contains a schedule of anti-racism readings, videos, and podcasts that can be done each day in the month. Uh, that's 10, 25, or 45 minute um, uh, increments depending on your own personal schedule. Join us at Neff Brewery. Gluten-free and non-alcoholic options will be available for an additional discussion each Thursday at 6 p.m. from June 1st through the 29th, if you choose. Or do the work at your own pace without discussion. Neff is located at 321 South Frankfurt Avenue downtown. Please sign up on the website to receive details and reminders. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
I will remind you that all persons are welcome to receive at this altar. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. <clears throat> Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bound and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the, he is the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and have taken away the sin of the world, who hath in his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again as one for us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, O Lord, our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make these with thy holy gifts, which now we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace, 
and heavenly benediction. And also that we and thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ have taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, its sacrifice for us. We do not presume to come to this thy table O oh, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
saying the post-communion prayer together, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us children, God's children through the resurrection of God's Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of God's blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has taught who's brought us out of bondage into sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.